let's jump to a kind of a different example. In this case, it's 05, fifth example. We will be talking about routing really quickly. So, let me. You guys see here we have two different types of courses, right? We have well, the intro to Python and we have the advanced Python programming course. These two are different resources in the same application, right? The same order of come obligation, they have two different resources, intro, intro to Python, advanced Python programming, they have different paths or routes. Each one of these resources will respond with different data, right? The, the title here is different, the title here is different, this is different, this is different. Again, we are responding with different types of data depending of the, of the path or the route. That's basically how writing, routing, sorry, routing should work. We will respond to different type of routes, right, based on the path that it's being expressed. Um, so let's check really quickly. In this case, we're defining two routes. And oh, and by the way, something important. Sometimes you guys will have some route that it's dynamic. So for example, you have something like tweet slash 10, tweet slash 20, tweet slash 30, just browsing or reading a particular tweet. Uh, the tweet part is kind of fixed, it's just slash tweet, so you are want to read a particular tweet, but this part is dynamic, you want to read the tweet number 30 or tweet number 10, right? So that's basically what, what that happens when we want to express dynamic routes, and the way to do that with Flask, it's just with this type of parameter right here, let's see in action, so I can So for example, we have, these are home, this is the home page, where she's showing a list of authors, and this is a particular author page. We are reading information about this author. And in this case, we are reading the information from a dynamic dictionary. Of course, we, in a production application, will be reading this from a database. In this case, we're just keeping it simple. So we have two routes. We have the slash route, the root route, and then we have the author route. And this, this route, in this case, it's dynamic because depending on the last name that it's receiving, in this case, O, Borges, we're displaying different information. The way to do that is super simple. We will just specify the fixed part of our route, and we will be including the dynamic part, right? That will depend based on the author that we want to approach. So for example, we get here the author's last, last name. Let me give you some. Some debug information. So you guys can see right here. So if I make this request again, you guys can see auto requested O. Oh, this is basically a string containing just O. Oh, as simple as that. Then we of course read it from the author's info dictionary that particular information from the author. Questions? So finally. Oh, so, yeah. sorry. So it seems like if we want to create another URL, we just have to use that decorator route, specify what the URL is, and then put the content in. If you want to create a different route? Yeah, so right now on the screen we have two app routes. There's one that's a slash, uh, one that's author slash yep. uh, that input. If we wanted another one, say app.route app .route slash book. Yep. Uh, that would be like a third branch that you can web, uh, browse into. Yep, exactly. Um, so, something else important. If when we browse this 
stage, we are constructing these routes. Basically, like guys, if I show you guys the source code, you see slash author slash po. If I show you these one, it's slash author slash porpoise. I am showing you guys in this example two different ways to build the same thing. The first one here is high coded. I know I am the sole developer of this application, so I know that to browse a particular author's um, site, website page, whatever, you have to put slash author slash and make last name of that particular author. The second one is a more dynamic and, of course, recommended way to do it. You are just invoking, you're passing the URL for a function from a class, and you're passing the name of the view, in this case, it's the name of the view, this one right here, and the parameter that you want to replace. You're basically telling author's last name is basically the author's last name parameter, and this one. So for example, if we ever need to change this um, URL, for example, after a review, I don't know why, the marketing guy came and said that SEO wasn't going, going so well with offer, we will reload this thing, and you guys will see that this route right here will be broken because it was, oh sorry, it was here hard-coded. But the one below still working because we never hard coded the route itself, but we just referenced the particular function offer that satisfied this particular route. Right? So this is super important, right? It's like uh, reversing URL sometimes call. You know, it's really important in order to have a scalable application. You guys will change a lot of routes in a medium website, you know, things change. So it's really important to do it in this way. Questions? Oh, by the way. So what happens if I look for something that doesn't exist? Of course, I get a key error. So what I want to do is, in this case, check we were in 05. What I want to do is check the that the author's last name, the author last name that I'm receiving, and if the, that author's last name is not present in this dictionary, I want to return, of course, a 404 error. So we're going to see how to return custom errors.